And um, should we continue to take Harita Ki and Neem during Tapas? Yes, of course. Tapas is independent of Harita Ki and Neem. Actually, castor oil as well. Harita Ki powder, Neem, in whatever form you take it, whether it is Neem powder in water or Neem boiled Neem leaves or Neem tablets and uh, castor oil, these three, on a daily basis, we should take. Um, it detoxes the body intensely. And a lot of our thoughts actually are generated, the mental activity we have is directly related to the level of toxicity there is in the body. So the less, the more the body is detoxed, um, the less toxins, therefore the less thoughts, less, less amount, lesser amount of thoughts. So, definitely, tapas is separate. Tapas is what you do to break whatever mental pattern, thought pattern, or pattern in general in which you're stuck in your life. Haritaki, castor oil in Neem is it's forever. As long as you have a body, you should take Haritaki, Neem and Castor Oil. I would even say Haritaki Neem and Castor Oil is the basic integrity tapas we need to do to make this journey towards experiencing super consciousness successful. Especially in today's world, because of the kind of food that we consume, our body is not prepared and wired to consume that kind of food. Whether it is non-veg or plastic food. If you have any other question, if you have any question, write it in the comments. I'll read and share the clicks and cognitions I have. Otherwise, sit with me, unclutch for a few minutes, a few moments. Not engaging with any thoughts. Unclutching from everything, from Maya. the perceived illusion of this world. If you have any questions, write them in the comments. I'll be happy to share powerful cognitions, cosmic understandings, which empower you and make you go beyond 
the powerlessness. The wise sit with me in the space of unclutching. The space where Swamiji resides, the space of Paramashiva. forum for questions regarding to spirituality, meditation, detox, Hinduism, guru-disciple relationship. If you don't have any questions, sit in the space of unclutching. Yes, Nityandam. Sciatic nerve healing. Hmm. Om Nityananda Paramashivo. There's two things which, uh, which are coming up. First is the posture. Posture is very important. If you develop, if you build uh, a bad pattern of posture, that can definitely affect the nerves, especially at the level of the hips, where the nerves cross from the lower body to the upper body. Bad posture can squeeze nerves and create issues, such as sciatic nerve, there's also a small thing, sometimes people wear their wallets in one of their back pockets. So you should not wear your wallet in any back pocket as it can squeeze the nerve and destabilizes your hips when you sit. There's a technique that Swamiji shared, which I personally have experienced many times Regarding, it's a very general technique, but it can be applied for sciatic nerve as well. It's very strange, but give it a try. It's a, yes. Bring intense awareness to the experience, to the, what we would experience initially as pain, the nervous stimuli that happens in this situation when the sciatic nerves get squeezed there will be some pain sometimes very intense sometimes less intense but what we tend to do when we have pain we we always have this habit this pattern of running away trying to withdraw but when you have something like a sciatic nerve pain you can't withdraw from sciatic nerve pain so one of the cognitions Swamiji shared is that pain is actually a signal from your body which seeks your attention. So where you have pain, just relax, unclutch, so that you don't get overwhelmed and you don't, your mind does not go all over the place. And just bring intense awareness to the place where you have pain. And don't judge the pain. Don't be in a space where you're like, oh, I don't want this, get out and all that stuff. Like you don't need to fight with, with the happening. Don't fight with the happening. And just bring awareness. 
bring awareness as much as you can. And you will see you will transcend the experience of pain. Any form of pain. Any form of pain. And the body will readjust itself as well. But what we do when we have pain, when we cognize something as painful, we, get very, we become very agitated in various ways. If we're busy doing something, then the pain is there and it distracts us from what we want to do. So we get agitated, frustrated, angry. And we should not engage in these emotional currents. Just sit, just feel like a pain is like a baby crying. If you have a child and he cries, she cries, she seeks attention, she seeks support, she seeks your energy, your attention. So in the same way, pain is same thing happening inside of your body. It's a part of your body which is crying and seeks your attention. So just sit with it, the space of oneness. And as much as you can, just be with it. Don't fight with it. Try to communicate with it, try to engage, try to relate to the happening instead of trying to disconnect. This technique goes for everything. Not only pain, even when you sit and do meditation and you become restless or you have pain or you do yogic postures and your joints are paining and something, whatever you do, wherever, whenever you have an experience which you consider unpleasant, don't fight with it, don't try to distance yourself from it, don't try to discard it, just try to relate with it, try to communicate with it, bring awareness to it. Don't fight with it. Welcome it. In that space, you will experience tremendous relaxation, serenity within yourself. And you will and the pain will be healed. The pain will heal. Pains are just memories stored in the body. These memories are just seeking completion. They seek to fully express themselves so that they can be liberated from being frozen in the muscle memory or the bio, or the bio memory. But if you enter in oneness, you get into the space of completion with that happening, then the memory gets fulfilled, gets completed, it disappears, it dissolves, it leaves your system. And the system come back, comes back to the proper alignment. Shiva is the all-pervasive Lord of the Universe. He does not discard any of his creations. He exists within everything. The way he expresses may vary, but he is available within everything. So this very idea of wanting to discard something is dualistic logic way of cognizing life which makes us cherish pattern of violence within ourselves and with others
So try that next time. And see how it goes. any questions again inviting you to write it down in the comments be happy to share clicks cognitions spiritual solutions from what Swamiji has shared with all of us otherwise sit with me a few moments a few minutes in the space of unclutching, unclutch from your mind, stop clinging to your thoughts, to the mental activity. Whatever happens, happens, but you do not get involved with what is happening. Just sit in the space of Paramashivoham, Paramashiva, the ultimate causeless, auspiciousness, superconsciousness. Oh great. Clutching is gold, like I said a little bit earlier, it's especially during this time of quarantine, unclutching is gold to conquer boredom, tiredness, loneliness, decision fatigue, suicidal arrogance, like Swamiji recently shared with us. Just sit, unclutch, anybody can do, doesn't require anything, just to get initiated into the process. You can watch the videos that Swamiji gave about unclutching. On YouTube. Can you suggest any advice to my eldest daughter? Advice in what line? In what direction? Or I should say to move in which direction? What kind of advice? If it's just a general advice, it would be Swamiji's life essence. Ananda Ringal. Be blissful. Always. Oh, get angry. I had a click about emotions such as anger and all that. Swamji says that um, we are responsible for everything that happens inside of us and outside of us. Now, we might not necessarily click with that right away, but if we constantly contemplate on that, we will surely have more and more insights on the depth of the spiritual truth one thing I realized is that when you generate anger, you create hell for yourself. See, the anger is not going to, is not helping us. 
in any way to manifest what we want. Now it depends in what type of situations we get angry, but anger it's an emotion which, which comes out of powerlessness. When we become powerful, we become ferocious. When we are angry, most of the time we feel some form of powerlessness with something in the outer world. And because we don't know how to relate to that thing in a powerful way, we generate lower emotions, such as anger, frustration, irritation, restlessness, and so many. But when we become more ferocious with ourselves, you will see that automatically you will stop being angry. Because ferociousness towards oneself, towards yourself, brings a fulfillment. It brings bliss. And that bliss, when you face, when you engage with the outer world, that fulfillment and that bliss, it, it does not allow you to get angry. It's like the bliss chemistry which is generated by being ferocious with yourself, this bliss chemistry, it, it, it kind of shuts down the anger mechanism. When you are ferocious, one, one experience, I, one thing I got is that when you are ferocious with yourself, you understand about ups and downs more and more. The more you understand about ups and downs, your ups and downs, the more you become compassionate towards others' ups and downs. So you know how not to get impatient and you, you get into a space where you can accommodate more and more people, where you can start to live and make life easier for other people. You will feel more blissful because ferociousness generates bliss chemistry within yourself. So you will be in a state of bliss. And when you are in a state of bliss, you are not a load on your environment. You are enriching to your environment. So... Yes. Anger should not be cherished. You should not forge your heart in the flames of anger. That is not, uh, it makes, it, it, the, the, the heart becomes weaker. You should forge your heart in the flames of ferociousness. One of the major click I got from what Swamiji has been sharing, because initially I was also wondering, what is the difference between anger and ferociousness? Sometimes the expression looks similar, but Swamiji clearly says that no, Ferociousness is the right space. Anger is the wrong space to be in. It's not, I mean, he doesn't say right or wrong, but he says ferociousness is powerful and anger comes out of powerlessness. So if you don't want to experience powerlessness, first thing you can do is stop getting... See, the decision to become angry is our decision. We decide to get angry. In the, another person in the same situation might not feel become angry. Why? Because they don't cognize the situation in the same way and they don't respond to the event in the same way. So the decision to get angry is a personal decision. And so the first thing that we need to do is really to stop making that decision. Give a gap. You don't need to react to the situ situation right away. Give a gap. In that gap, do unclutching have seeking, contemplate, see what is going on, try to understand, be sensitive to the people in front of you because sometimes, most of the times, when we get in a lower space, the people in front of us are also experiencing some kind of lower space. So that person might be depressed, you might be angry, but that's just a different expression of a lower space. So the first thing that we need to do is to not decide, decide not to get into that lower space. Just be on touch for a few moments and try to really connect with the person in front of you and see like what is going on. What is the person trying to say? What is this? Why, why, why is this situation happening? How am I responsible for this situation? Have seeking. 
seeking will give you the capacity to unclutch from situations which you normally get completely clutched to because you get attached to some dimension of the situation. Ferociousness is always about, anger is always about uh, towards outside and it comes from a space of powerlessness. The frustration that we have inside of us because we are not living the life the way we would want to live it. Because we are not authentic and integrated to ourselves. We get frustrated about ourselves. Vomiting that frustration outside is anger. But if you decide to be ferocious and to be more integrated, to be more authentic to the way you want to exist, automatically you will stop becoming angry. You will stop cherishing anger. And when you, when you become more ferocious, you will see that things in the outer world align a lot more. It supports you. You don't get stuck in the same situations. Depends, of course, in the, the intensity of your ferociousness, but ferociousness is the way to go. Ferociousness with yourself is the way to go. There is no need to be angry. There is always a way to get what you want done to get it done. There is always a way. So we just need to keep seeking for it. And be sensitive to our environment, to ourself. Not be complacent, complacent but uh, being sensitive. See things for what they are and from there make decisions and enrich. Enrich yourself, enrich others. Should we should forge our heart in the flames of enriching, not with anger. Nityananda, is the unclutching med meditation efficient even if one arrives after the beginning of the meditation? For instance, five minutes ago. Yes. Unclutching meditation is a, it's a space we get into. Whenever you have an opportunity to unclutch, you should jump on it. Actually, we can always be in the state of unclutching, but initially it will be difficult for us to get into the space of unclutching while being active. So, in, in clutching is just deciding to sit with yourself, head, neck and spine in a straight line as much as possible, sitting comfortably and remembering Swamiji. Swamiji was saying, just unclutch from every thought, like bubbles arising in a water tank. Don't interfere with them, just watch them get created, travel towards the surface and disappear at the surface. There's no beginning, there's no end to, uh, to unclutching. Unclutching is the simplest meditation. The most simple, simplest meditation to share with people. Anybody can do. You can be in the bus from one between two things. Just sit in the space of unclutching for 10 minutes. You could be in the train, you could be in the plane, you could be in your car in a parking lot. Just decide to unclutch three minutes before going to work or before coming back from work before having food, very important actually. Before having food, you should do connecting with Paramashiva. You should unclutch a few minutes and bless the food. Don't jump on it right away like, like a survival need. Engage with your hunger in a human, more mature way, not in an animalistic way, in a bestial way. Animals jump on food. But we have assumed the human body. 
the pattern of jumping on food is still available in the bio memory because because of all the buildup of that pattern that was created when we were in the animal body but but in the human body we have the possibility to break it so we should break it So before having food, you just sit a few moments, bring your awareness to your third eye, remember Swamiji, invoke Paramashiva, talk to Paramashiva, bless the food. If you have an Atmalinga, I'll give you a glimpse. If you have an Atmalinga, you can feed the Atmalinga. Swamiji initiates us into Atmalinga, we do puja to it. And uh, if you have Atmalinga, feed the Atmalinga and then have the food. Before you go to sleep, you should sit a few moments, unclutch and then go rest. When you wake up in the morning, you should sit a few moments, unclutch and then start the day. Doing unclutching and or Mahavakya, doing these four things, Swamji said, is the most powerful. The four patterns which we carry from the animal body, which are very, very strong and deeply rooted in the, uh, in the human nature, is hunger, fear, lust, and I believe anger. Hunger and anger. So for all these things, before engaging with any of these, always unclutching, remembering that you are Paramashiva, you are super consciousness. You are, you have a body and you feed the body, that is fine. When you're in front of food, it's not that you need to deny food. Of course, you should restrict the amount of solid food you eat for various reasons, but just remember, I am body also. I am consciousness carrying a body, I'm feeding this body. But I'm much more than just a body. And if the possibilities which are available to me are much higher than just possibilities of the body. We are consciousness, so the possibilities that are available to us are the possibilities available to consciousness, which means all possibilities, because consciousness is has all possibilities. That is why many yogis manifest different types of powers. That's why Swamiji initiates us into powers. We manifest these possibilities and powers which are inhumane, which you cannot manifest as long as you associate yourself, as long as you're not initiated into consciousness, into the space of Paramashivoham. How can someone unclutch from the fear of death? Swamiji has given a satsang about that. Marana Smarana. Marana Smarana means remembering death. You sit and you remember death. And whatever fear and whatever is being triggered by the remembrance of death, just let release it just like relive it like when Swamiji does the completion process we do relive it means you just experience it without any uh, without any desire to destroy it to get rid of it in an unclutched way you just let that emotion that emotional response or these thoughts arise and you let them go you allow the completion, they should not be repressed or in any way. You just sit unclutched and you, re and you, and you just live these experiences. Marana Smarana. Remembering death. You can do this meditation anytime you want. Swamji said that 
This process is completely successful when death can no longer make you shiver. So until death makes you shiver, uh, until death doesn't make you shiver, you should do this process when you have time or when you decide to. It helps to remove all the insecurities, unfulfilled desires, unexpressed emotions, all the incomplete thought currents we have, all of these get cleansed, get completed, get fulfilled and leave our system. Once they leave our system, then naturally we are fulfilled, we are more complete. And not only that, but we start to manifest more possibilities and powers as well, because there's a certain amount, a certain amount of energy which we need to use on a daily basis in order to cope up internally with these insecurities, fears, incomplete thought currents, emotional responses. So when all of these get completed, the amount of energy that you're constantly using to manage these becomes available to you and you can use that energy for something else to create something else in your life whatever projects you have and whatever you're doing and so you'll become more energetic more useful youthful you'll sleep better and your whole life will drastically improve so doing marana smarana is an amazing process remembering death and unclutching from all emotional responses incomplete thought currents insecurities, fears, everything, whatever pops up, it might be different for each one of us, whatever pops up, just be unclutched, don't fight with it, don't try to destroy it, don't try to run away from it, don't do anything, just witness it in an unclutched space, from the space of Paramashivoham, I am Paramashiva. The more you do that, amazing cleansing will happen in your inner space. And your life will, will be transformed because all these insecurities, incompletions, um, emotional responses and all that, they're constantly being manifested inside of us. So naturally, without even us being fully aware of that, we project these things in the outer world. And the reality we experience gets molded according to that. So when you complete that in your inner space, you will stop projecting that in the outer space and naturally your outer reality will change. So that is part of the science of manifesting your reality. So Amji says you do completion, that gives tremendous new fresh energy, new space inside of you. After that you declare what you want to manifest and you start to align to that. And you will see, you will be successful. You will be successful. And ultimately everything is a manifestation of the fear of death whether we are we can, can we can see it or we don't see it we don't see how whatever uh, emotion or thought we have uh, if we don't see how it is connected to death that doesn't matter end of the day the only thing that frightens us is death for various reasons so Conquering the fear of death is definitely the, the great death. Going beyond death is life. That is what in the scriptures, when Swamiji was giving satsangs on Upanishads, talk about Amritattva, immortality, or nectar, immortal immortality, the nectar of immortality is going beyond the fear of death. So you can check also in the link in the comments in the first comments I posted some links um, on the uh, Nityanda Kailasa Kailasa Nityanda Media House in Kailash YouTube channel I upload small clips of some of these satsangs with the link to the original satsang as well so you can have a look and uh, absorb the powerful cognition. 
directly from the source. So with this, we'll close the session for today, or for now. There might be another one a little bit later on. So thanking you again for joining these lives. Unclutching, enriching, and enriching sessions. And uh, yes, hoping to see you in the next one. Yes. Always there, being available. We have to make ourselves available to the world and share what Swamiji has given us. So with this, we'll close with the Purna Mantra, this session. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Sarvam Bhagavat Shri Nityananda Paramashivam Padukar Panamastu Om Nityanandam Yes. Thank you again. Check the links in the comments. The first comment, I put links to Kaila Salat ORG, Nityana Media House in Kailash YouTube channel, Be Food Free, Minutes for Peace if you want to do unclutching with people around the world and all that. So have a look at that and I'll see you in the next session. Nityanandam.